Power Query. That's what we're looking at today. I love Power Query. I love connecting to dirty data sets and cleaning them up. It's nerdy, but it's massively satisfying and it can help you learn some really cool functionality of Power Query. So what are we going to do today? We are going to connect to a dirty data set, which is Wordle, the game, which you might know. We're going to take that data, which is pretty messy. We're going to apply some steps, some data transformations, maybe learn a little bit along the way. And then we're going to create from that the ability to do a little bit of analysis of the words that you'll find in Wordle. So what am I talking about? Let's have a look and find out. So if you go to the Wordle website and you right click, you can view the page source. You scroll down to the bottom of the page and there is this JavaScript. And that is essentially what Wordle is. So I know from doing this before that if I search for M A equals within this page, that's where my Wordle words start. And that's important for later. Now let's scroll right of now a little bit. You'll see one word, only one word. I want to limit the amount of words that you see in case you play Wordle. I don't want to ruin this for you, right? Anyway, Power Query. I'm going to have a new query and I'm going to have a standard web query. So we just click on web. We paste in the link we copied before and click on OK. So when the data loads, you can right click on it and you can select CSV. There are a few different options, but in this case, you want CSV. And by default, what it's going to do is going to split the data up and it's the delimiter it's going to use is a comma. Well, we don't want that. See, you can see the comma right there. We're going to use a different delimiter. And this is when we're going to go back to this MA equals that we saw before. So we can say custom delimiter MA equals, and then we're going to go on OK. That splits our data into two columns. Now, we now don't need the second step because that's irrelevant now. Now we're splitting by this MA plus. So we're going to get rid of that second step. We have two columns. We don't need the first column because that's everything before the word starts. So we don't need that. That leaves us with this column with lots of blank rows. So we get rid of the blanks. That leaves us with what looks like at this point, just our Wordle words. What I now want to do is split that by delimiter again. And this time I am going to say split it by comma. But instead of splitting into columns, I'm going to split it into rows. We click on OK. And that's what we get. This long list of words, because we split them by the delimiter and each word was separated by the comma, which was a delimiter that we used. So as you can see, there's still a lot of dirty data in there. We need to clean that. We need to get rid of all that so that what we are left with are the Wordle words, which are always, as you probably know, five letter words and in the data set that actually all written in lowercase. That's also important for the next step. What I want to do is I want to add a column. And for this column, what I want to say is only show me the data, which isn't the lowercase alphabet. So for that, we are using text dot remove, which removes text, of course, we specify the column, and we specify what we want to remove. And this is adding a column. So we're going to add a column with all the data from our column two, as the column is named, other than the lower case alphabet. So as you can see now, in this new column, this custom column that we just created, what we have is all the data from column two, other than the lower case alphabet. So in the rows where you see blanks, that's because all they contain were lowercase letters. So we say remove them and you're left with, with nothing. So why are we doing that? What is that input? What's, what's that helping us with? Well, it helps us with the next step because we can use that column. So I'm going to say replace values and I'm going to say zero with nothing. Now the zero is not important right now. That's just something that I put in so I can do this change that I'm about to do. 
And the change I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, not the zero, forget the zero, delete that. So I'm going to say each, and then I'm going to name the column custom. And what that is going to do is going to remove everything that is in custom from the first column. So as you can see now, if it exists in custom, it no longer exists in our column two. The benefit of that is that it's allowed us to clean up some of the data. So when we had a five letter word plus a square bracket, as you saw, we can, we've got rid of that. So instead of just saying remove square brackets, I can just ensure that I capture everything and remove everything that is not a lowercase letter. That's what I've done. Now for the next step, I'm gonna do something pretty similar. What I want to do is again, use text remove, but slightly different, I'm gonna add an if. So what I'm gonna do is this, I'm gonna say, if I remove the lowercase alphabet from the column named column two, and the result is a blank, then give me a one, else is zero. So I'm kind of creating a flag. And again, that flag is saying, if we remove the lowercase alphabet from this column, and the result is a blank, then one. If it's not blank, then give me a zero. And now you can see that the values that only contain a lowercase alphabet are one. If we remove the lowercase alphabet, but what we're left with is not a blank, so as you can see here, um, row say six through 21, that's giving me a zero. Why? Because there is there would be data. You can also see though, in rows one, four, and five, that it's showing a one. Why? Well, because we are saying this value is blank. If I remove the lowercase alphabet and it's still blank, then show me a one. So that's true. So my rule has worked to an extent, but it hasn't rule worked completely. So we need to apply another rule so we can create essentially two flags. And once we have two flags, that should, that should do it. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, just give me the length of column two. So I'm adding a column and I'm saying extract the length. So as you can see, it says five when there is a five letter word. It says zero if there's nothing in there because there's, there's nothing there. So that's what it's showing us. So what that allows us to do is create a second filter to get rid of data that we don't want. So now if I go and apply the filter to the first one that we created, say just show me the ones. Then we've got rid of a lot of data that we don't want. However, you can see there's still stuff that we don't want to see. So if I show everything now, but the five, you can see there's still a lot of stuff there that we don't want to see. So now if I say the opposite, show me only the five, you'll see now that we've gotten rid of all the mess from this data set. We've taken a lot of chaos and from that chaos, we've created order. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get rid of the columns that I don't need anymore, which are those three columns that we created with the flags. And after that, I'm finally gonna give column two a proper name and I'm gonna call it position. That'll become clear why I've done that very soon. Because the next step involves splitting that column by delimiter, uh, by position, sorry. And the positions are going to be all of them. So I wanna split it by zero, one, two, three, and four. So I can show each letter in its own column. The final thing is to unpivot those columns and it gives us just two columns. The first column, which is now called attribute, shows us the position and the second shows us the letter itself. So I'll just rename that column to letter and I'll rename the column attribute and just call it position. I guess one final step I can do, I can say replace position dot with 
nothing. So that will just show instead of position dot one, etc. it'll show just one, two, three, four to represent the position of that letter. What that allows us to do is to then see how often each letter appears in which position. So I change the name of the query, give it something that makes sense. In this case, Wordle, of course. And once that's data, that data is loaded, we can do some nice analysis with that. So I've used, of course, Deneb, um, but this is what we're doing. We can see now that how often each letter appears in which position in the word. So for example, the letter A is in the first position 735 times, it's in position two, 2,259 times, uh, etc. So basically how often each letter appears in which position. So the analysis that we're doing isn't the most important part. What the important part is for this video or what we're doing here is looking at how you can create something nice from a messy data set. Um, I think it's really good fun to do that, to be honest. What's important is that if you've never used Power Query, you start to understand how powerful it can be and how much easier it can make your job. Very important to understand that if you're a person who uses Excel, everything that we've done in this video can also be done in Excel. This is not a Power BI thing. This is a Power Query thing. And Power Query is a huge and very important part of Excel. Sadly underutilized. Um, so if you never used it, really, really check it out. This is, of course, just a silly example with some little bits of pieces of what you can do. It can do a lot more. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, interesting or strange data set. Leave some comments if you would have done things, things differently. By all means, what I did wasn't perfect. I was just showing one or two things, the power of data transformations. Um, yeah, if you liked the video, give it a like. If you want to see more videos as ever, please subscribe. And more importantly, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much and goodbye.